Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing the Mermaid Tarot deck by, hopefully I'm not going to butcher her, her name, but um, I think it's Lisa or Lisa or Liza Robertson. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the author's first name, but this is how it is spelled if you are interested in this deck. Um, the illustrations and imagery, artwork, all that stuff is by Julie Dillon. And this is a fairly new deck. Um, I think this deck just got released um, this month in March of 2019. And that I only say that for like future viewers um, if they find this video. So yeah, this was released in March 2019. So this year. Um, I'll show you the back of the box real quick. And I'll go into the guidebook in just a second. Um, so the back of the box looks kind of like this. And please excuse the setup here. Um, I'm trying my best to kind of figure out the best way to record this and show you guys but um anyways this is the back of the box and here's kind of what it says and you can pause the video and read that if you would like um here's like a preview of what some of the cards cards look like and yeah there's 288 pages in the guidebook and yes they are full colored so it's really cool um I'll show you just the side if I can right here, if you're interested. Um, I didn't actually pay 30 bucks for this deck. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than that on Amazon, but it depends on where you get it. There's the information for it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the box aside, and I'm going to show you the guidebook if I can set you back down for just a second. Okay, so the guidebook is right here. Really pretty guidebook. Um, it is a really, really thick guidebook. Hopefully you guys can see this. So this is a really thick book. Like, it's a good size book. Um, yeah. It's not like one of those teeny tiny books that most um, tarot decks tend to have in Oracle decks. Usually they're pretty small. And they're usually in black and white. But th this book is actually in color. And it's a good size book. So here is the back of it. And if you'd like to read that, just pause the video. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can show you an example of these pages. Bear with me with my shaky camera and odds and ends everywhere. <laughs> um, find the chapter or contents, I mean. Um, so here's a little bit of the information over here. Just printed in 2019. Um, the table of contents. So you have the introductory, then you've got... Um, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, four, and five, and a final note. So chapter one is basically an introduction um, and the inspiration for how the deck was created. Uh, chapter two is kind of how to start working with the deck. Chapter three is um, the major arcana cards, each individual one broken down. So it has the meanings and the, um, well, it has the upright meanings as well as the reversed meanings as well. Um, chapter 4, same thing with the minor arcana, so the different suits, so the cups, wands, pentacles, and sword, swords. <laughs> and chapter 5 is mermaids, magic, and spreads, and that's like, has different card spreads you can use, and it also has some spells you can also do, so I really like that about this book um, as well, because a lot of guidebooks don't have that. So it's got, you know, full color pages for each individual card, which I'll show you, like, for, no, for example, number one, the full. So each card has its own individual, like, full page in color. Has a bit about it. It has the, like, kind of general upright meanings. And then on the back, it has the reversed meanings. So each, um, each card is like that. So that's kind of how the guidebook is for the most part. Um, I will give you a little glimpse if I can find it of the, aha, chapter five. So mermaid magic and spreads. I just thought I'd show this to you as well since I'm flipping through the book. So here's kind of what the um, chapter five looks like. So it has like different spells and how to use your tarot cards um, with those individual spells. So if you're like into sea witchcraft, like if you're a sea witch, um, this is <laughs> this is a really good book and deck to use for sure. 
so I haven't even got to use this yet. I've just kind of flipped through it a little bit. Um, but it's it's really brand new. I just got it yesterday. So, but from what I've seen already, it's really, really cool. Yeah, it's got daily journal prompts and spreads and just different things you can do. So it's a really cool book. Full color and everything. Um, really nice. So I really, really love that book. So, moving on to the first part of this flip through review of this um, I about said oracle card deck because I've, I've done so many oracle card decks tarot card deck um, this is going to be the major arcana that I'm going to do and then I'm going to do probably a second video if not if not four videos I may break it down into each suit but I'm going to try to get it into maybe just two videos but this first this video right here is going to be like just the major arcana cards and then I'm going to do the minor arcana um, in a second video so, I'm going to start with the first one, which will be the Fool, and I'm going to show you kind of a close-up of this if I, if I can. So here's the Fool card, so the colors are gorgeous, hopefully you can see that. Oh, and the backs, let me show you the backs before I forget. So the backs are really, really pretty. Like, they're pretty simple, but they're they're just done really well. I like this, like, little spiral type kind of thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's, like, it's got, like, water elements. It's got air and stars. It's got this, like, leafy seaweed-looking kind of stuff. But it's in, a, like, it's in, like, a spiral form. So, it's really cool. I know, but I really like the backs as well. Okay. Let's see. So, this is the Magician. you can see that okay I'm trying to like move it to where the glare isn't isn't as bad so I hope you can see this so this is the high priest priestess card the empress and I think if I'm not mistaken I think that this image was most likely I'm guessing anyway um, probably based off of Yamaya or Yamaya. I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, and I'm so sorry if I butcher that. I don't mean to offend anybody. Um, but the she's the ocean goddess. A lot of times in um, like the Hoodoo practice, or even um, in the religion of Voodoo, a lot of people will um, kind of pay homage to this goddess. So I, I'm pretty sure this card was actually based off of her. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I want to say I had read something that said that this deck was, that card was actually based off of Yamaya or Yamaya. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but anyway, this is the Emperor card. So it's got, it's very, um, like King Triton kind of, you know, or King Neptune, but my first impression is, uh, King Triton. <laughs> yes, I'm a Little Mermaid fan. Always have been. <laughs> That's what it makes me think of, though. Uh, here's the Hierophant. The Lovers. So this card is a really cool card because it has her mermaid form, but she's actually looking at herself, but on land. So in both forms, mer form and like human form. So I think that's a really cool image to put for the lovers. That's that's really cool. It's very unique. It's different than your traditional male female characters, you know, in that card typically. Uh, here's the chariot, which is like a seahorse, literally. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, strength. Just got this, uh, this whale for strength, which is really neat. I think that's a perfect mammal to choose for strength. The hermit. Yeah, there's definitely not only just water elements to these cards, but earth as well. 
Um, I feel like it's kind of a split deck. Like most of it is water um, based when it comes to the elements, but there there are some cards in here that are pretty earthy too, or at least half and half earth and water specifically. Here's the Wheel of Fortune card. So that's really cool how it's the uh, like the spindle, the wheel of the ship. It's not really what it's called, but that's what I'm going to call it for this video. Because I can't think of the actual term. But anyway, <laughs> the wheel of the uh, the ship. Justice, the scales. With a little uh, clownfish, I believe is what they're called. Like from, from Finding Nemo. <laughs> I love this card. This is really cool for the hanged man. I've seen this and I was like, that's awesome. I mean, it's kind of sad but it depends on how you look at look at it and what question you're asking but um I mean I hate to see anything caged up or on a net or anything but the way this was done it was it was beautifully done I think for the hanged man for this mermaid deck like it was it's perfect I think so I think it's a really cool card um this is the death card this again is pretty sad like a lot of these these cards are actually pretty sad and kind of morbid in a way but you know I've seen decks that are you know even more sad but to me this is pretty sad because I'm so connected to the ocean and life of the ocean um so to see like the animals hurting and dying is really sad but it also is true to reality so like in this card for example you know you have big oil companies polluting the oceans killing the animals and all other forms of life too that live in the ocean so it's just it's really sad but it gets you to really think and look and observe and uh, keep in mind so um, this is the temper temperance card which is a really pretty card I actually like this one a lot I love that the shell and the color coming out of this I think it's really pretty it's got some pretty colors in this card oh here's another sad one guys this is the devil card Again, you've got a mermaid that's caged up, on land, out of her element, locked away, and you've got all these, like, treasures and possessions on the outside of her. So I'm guessing a human probably locked her in a cage, captured her, and I don't know if they've found these treasures underwater or stole it or what, but this card is actually a pretty sad card. To me, anyways, it is. Um, you've got the tower. When I see cards like this, especially being like a mermaid oceanic deck, I think of um, Atlantis. So to me, this image screams Atlantis. City underwater. Um, here's the star card which is a really beautiful card and this is also the image for the um, cover of the deck and guidebook actually not the guidebook excuse me not the guidebook but the box okay the moon so you got this really pretty moon this mermaid who's singing or a siren I guess really more so than a mermaid since there's musical notes kind of coming out everywhere so I'm guessing she's more of a siren than a mermaid per se. And yes, there is a difference <laughs> for anyone who's connected to the ocean or studies the ocean or sea witchcraft. There is a difference between a mermaid and a siren. The sun. That's a neat card too. You can see the sun underneath from underwater. I love that. Uh, judgment. That's an interesting card. So I feel like he's like... I guess the person in charge, I guess, of the mer people, per se. He seems like he is, as he's kind of high up there with his, like, conch shell. And these little mer people are down here, and they're like little bubbles and... That's an interesting cartoon. 
And the last one for the Major Arcana that I will show you, or that I have to show you, is the World. That's where the Major Arcana ends. So here is the World card, and it's really pretty. Okay. Alright, so that was the Major Arcana. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and I will show you the Minor Arcana in Part 2.